All right, so we're here. We're going to quick review of the QB Ears Quartet. This is a 2BA, 2DD set. It retails for around $109. And uh, let's get into this. So the box looks very similar to the box of the QB Ears Orchestra Light, um, but just purple. It's got this purple theme to it. Only comes in purple and black. But I really like the look of these IEMs actually, so that's not much of a complaint for me. So, take these out, take this out here, we got the case. It's actually my second time recording the review, so if I'm a little bit rushed, because I'm just like, okay, come on, I already did this already. Anyway, so, here's the case, I mean, it's just a, it's the same case that came with the orchestra light. Um, it is like very cheap feeling, but at a hundred dollars, that's fu it's fine. I mean, it, it's this part is gonna probably come off over time. It's really poorly printed on, but I like how it would fit. It's very thin, and it's not too big either. Here's like the size compared to like the IEMs, I guess, or like compared to my hand. It will go in your pocket just fine. I actually prefer having something like this. Where it's a little bit cheaper quality than like those like leather-ish cases, like those fake leather cases. Because this will go in your pocket. You will actually be able to use this. So, yeah, let's get, let's all get on with that. So, let's open the little case. You got these bags with the different ear tips. And we got the cable. Get this case out of the way. Alright, so let's talk about the cable. I like this cable. It's very similar in feel to the um, QBR's Cadenza cable, except it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit thicker, I think. Um, this is by memory. I don't have it like with me right now, but yeah, it, it's just I can tell it's a little bit thicker than the um, than the Cadenza cable, but it stays very straight. I actually like this cable a lot. The only thing issue I have is that it doesn't come in 4.4 option whatsoever, so you only get the option of 3.5. But I mean. That's not much of a complaint you can have at this price, to be honest. This is a great cable for the for the for the price range. It's 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 perfectly fine. Um, let's talk about ear tips. So it's been a really long time since I tried these ear tips, to be honest with you. There's just so many ear tips, and then there's the tuning switches, and then actually the main thing I wanted to do in this review is with the comparisons in this competitive price range. So. I, at the beginning of getting these IEMs, I just tried all of the ear tips and spin fits. The most comfortable and best sounding tips to me were the spin fits, so I just didn't really use these for the rest of my testing. So, I mean, take what you will with that. I, I know, like, it would have been great if I could just have memory of every single tip and everything like that, but my auditory memory is not good enough for something like that. So, um, I will just be reviewing based on the sound I got from the spin fits. I found that these tips were the most comfortable out of the stock tips, but I really do recommend getting spin fits. The comfort difference on these with spin fits was kind of insane. It, it went from like with these tips being one of the lesser comfortable IMs to being like the most comfortable I am actually in the price range. And it's probably because of the way it's shaped. To me, I mean, like it's got like this. It's really well contoured, kind of similar to the um, Tri Meteor. Let me grab that. Oh, that just fell on the floor. Grab the other one. Uh, the Tri Meteor. It's kind of similar in shape to that. I feel like. Uh, oh, actually, really similar. I just realized now. I didn't actually take these out until like I started recording. Um, really similar in shape to the uh, to the Tri Meteor. But yeah, and I, I thought the Trimedia was extremely comfortable. These are even more comfortable than the Trimedia to me. So I think that just comfort wise, especially with spin fits, like the way the spin fits work on them is that it gets a really good deep insertion in the ear without being uncomfortable, without being too deep in your ear. And and the way this, this is like shaped, it, it just it just for my ears at least, just perfectly settles in my ear without like any comfort issues. So, I would recommend if you buy these to get a pair of spin fits. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, and also in the bag with the clear tips, you will get this little SIM ejection tool. This is, of course, not to eject a SIM card from your IEMs, but it's uh, to fix the switches on the IEMs themselves. So, you have two tuning switches on them, but I'm going to be honest, with my testing, I could not hear a difference. Or at least I couldn't hear the difference it was making. Because I heard like a small volume difference. 
on it, but I couldn't tell like if there was increased bass or highs or mids very well. I mean, I just it really didn't make enough of a difference for it to matter. Like uh, I wanted to like you know do a comparison with this switch configuration. It sounds like this with this switch configuration like this. I was able to do that on the Star River review, but on these the switches don't make enough difference at all on any configuration first one up second one down second up first one down both up both down they all sound the same to me really are very very close so i'm just going to be reviewing with the two switches up uh, i really tried to see if i could figure out the difference but i could not so i apologize about that but i, I couldn't tell a difference in the sound so Let's get let's start with uh, how the uh, actually let's talk about build first. I mean it's all resin shell. It's classic. It, there's nothing like particular about it. Very it's a flush two pin. It's a very good looking set of IEMs at hundred dollars. Actually one of my like uh, one of my preference like when it comes and I can't speak. One of the better looking IEMs to me, just in general. I really like how these look. I do wish there was a little bit more purple in the front i don't know why maybe it's just my set but all the purple kind of went to the back of the shell and like the front is just mostly black i don't know if all the sets are going to be like that but mine kind of ended up with the front the front part of the uh the the shell is just mostly black i'm pretty sure it's just random though but anyway comfort's great looks are great build quality seems pretty good uh, i don't imagine these breaking if you drop them that much so Anyway, let's talk about sound signature. Uh, I find these to be, uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's a little bit bass heavy, especially in the, in the, in the mid bass. The sub bass is not as heavy as the, the mid bass. The mid bass sometimes can get a little bit overbearing compared to the mid range. But the mid range is present and even a little bit forward, actually. It's just the very, just very slightly on some songs, the mid bass can be a bit too emphasized. But otherwise, you have a you have a you have the mid bass boost. You have very forward mid range, and you have a a, res, a, res, a rolled off highs. Like you're not gonna get a lot of treble sparkle on these. So if you're a treble head or you love treble, this is not for you. This is a warmer set of IEMs. Um, when I got the orchestra light, I thought that it was gonna be a really good upgrade from the. Um, the cadenza when I, before I got it before I listened to it I was like oh finally an upgrade to the cadenza I got it and it was nothing like the cadenza it was bright and had a different tuning completely these are a great upgrade to the cadenza you're getting a very similar sound signature but it's not quite as warm you is still warm signature but it's not as warm as the cadenza is and the cadenza is smaller and probably they have the same comfort. Be I, I like just that's how good this is shaped. That like the comfort is as good as the cadenza was. For me, this is for me though. Your ears are probably different shape or something. But um, I think this is probably gonna fit more ears because it's smaller the the, the cadenza. But um, you're still gonna get great comfort on both of them. I think that this is just a strict upgrade from the cadenza. So if you like the cadenza, this is a good upgrade from that. Anyway, um, you are getting a warmer signature. You're getting rolled off highs, but it's not exactly a V shape. It's it's more of like um, you're getting a, a bit of a increase in the bass with a forward mid range, uh, rolled off highs and rolled off upper mids. A little bit in female vocals don't sound as well extended as they could be. We're gonna talk more about that in the comparisons with other IEMs in the price range, but these do better male vocals than female vocals, but they still do both excellently. But I think it does better male vocals than female vocals. I think for genres, the best genres they can do is... Uh, this, is can, this is a really good all-rounder, honestly. But I think it does EDM really well. Like, especially if, you, if, if you're someone who likes EDM and likes warm-sounding IEMs, this is amazing for that. This is exactly what you're looking for. It's got punchy bass. It's still got good mid-range for if, if you're listening to, like, um, something that's not straight-up dubstep. If you're listening to just EDM music, this is great when it got, like, lyrics and... You know, there's a drop, all that. Um, it's great for just straight up dubstep also. It'd be good for that too. It's got great bass for the price range. Um, I'd say the bass detail is not the best. It's still good. It's It has good punch and good... Um, it's tight, but it's not got, it doesn't have the best texture. Um, 
it's still great texture for this price range, but like I don't think it's just the, the best texture of the base. Uh, Mid-range is not the most detailed, but has a very good fullness to it. I'm going to talk about that when we compare it with the Hexa here. I, I have the Hexa, and I have here also the C Audio Rinko. Move these out of the way. You don't need to see these the whole time. But, yeah, it's got a, the mid-range has a great fullness to it. And it is, like, like it's a little bit less, it's a little bit more recessed than the bases, but not recessed. It's like, like, like as I said, sometimes the mid bass can get in front of the vocals a little bit, and I don't like that. But it's not, it doesn't happen often enough for it to become a real issue. So I don't want you to just think, okay, that's a problem, I'm not touching these. No, but it's something to be aware of, but it's not a big problem most of the time. Um, it has a very great natural timbre to it, sounds... Almost like a single dynamic, but with like the you know the the details that you can get with a BA with like with with some extra BAs in the set. Uh, it has a much more natural timbre than the um, than the Hexa does. Even though the Hexa doesn't have BA timbre too much, it still has a little bit of metallicness in the upper mid range to like in and actually just in general the mid range. This has none of that. This is the it's very dynamic sounding. This is a very, very, it's pretty much a budget Penong Globe. You just try to get this. It's very, very similar to the Penong Globe in terms of comfort and sound. Uh, I think the, the Globe might be uh, more comfortable, maybe. They're, they're actually not, actually, I think they're both comfortable, just equally comfortable. But if you want a good reference uh, to what this sounds like, this is very similar in sound to the Globe. I think the Globe's a little bit darker, and the mid range is not as like um, not as no, the note weight of the mid range is not as thick. And I think this has better bass detail and just overall detail and better staging. Th this is like 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 a, again a budget Globe. So the Globe is better, but you're getting a pretty similar signature and sound as the Globe. And that's, that's impressive at this price range. So that's something to, to note, I guess. Um, the highs, as I said, they're a bit rolled off. But you are getting good quality highs. And you're getting no BA timbre or sibilance at all. This is a warm sounding set. You are not going to get sibilance. Which is something I really like about the set. It's very similar to the Cadenza in the way where it's warm, fun sounding, yet not muddy and it's, it still can present you with good detail. Now let's talk about more... Oh yeah, also soundstage imaging. Imaging is pretty much par of the course for this price range. Maybe a little bit above average. You're going to get better um, imaging than you're going to get on um, the lower price sets. But you're going to get the same imaging quality as the Rinko. Not as good imaging as the Hexa. But the Hexa is not too much ahead of these. It's just a little bit better on the Hexa. Uh, soundstage. The soundstage is like, it's not only like wider, it's also tall. So you're getting like um, around this much, I guess you could say. So it's not like the widest stage, but it's still pretty good at the price. I think that the Hexa is wider than the Quartet, but the Quartet is taller. It has, it has, it, you can hear more things below and above you. So if you want a, like if you want a wider sound, Hexa, if you want a tall, like something with the height and, and like also below you, you're going to prefer the quartet when it comes to staging, at least. Of course, the staging is better on this than the Rinko. The Rinko does not have the greatest staging in the price range. For me, actually, it's quite an in-your-head experience, pretty close to it. I think it's like, like that. It's not the best staging, and this is a better staging than the Rinko. Um, so, we talked about that. I'm just trying to think about what to talk about. Like, we're just going to go to comparisons now. I think that we talk about like it's, it's independent stuff. We're going to go full-on comparison with... The low bass, mid, highs, all that in detail. So if we're going to talk about bass, I think that you're getting the best sub bass on the Rinko. Um, but better mid bass, the best mid bass on the Hexa, this is a, somewhere in between the two. Um, I think that the quality of the bass is better, on of the mid bass at least, is better on the Hexa. And I think the, but I think the quantity of the mid bass is a lot more on the quartet. Does that mean that the quality is bad on the quartet? Not at all. It's just that I think the, the, the sub bass has a very good quality, very good like detail texture on the hexa, while the quartet can some, sometimes get a little bit boomy, a little bit, little bit. Don't, 
don't think that it's like very low quality. It's just, like for the price range, it's good, but compared to the Hexa, it's not as um, textured. In comparison to Rinko, Rinko is a very strange sounding set, so it's hard for me to compare, it, especially in the base department with the Rinko. The Rinko is a base, basey set, a basey set where that's the main focus of the set, and so I don't want to say it's better or worse. It's different, and so the Rinko is its own thing, really. I'd say the Rinko has more uh, fun base, I guess, fun base, but uh, I think more accurate on the quartet and the hexa. This is more more fun. It's got it, this is its own thing. It does its own weird stuff that I don't like to do too much comparison with the base. And let's go to mid range. The mid range is going to be more detailed. And uh, and a lot brighter, of course. So overall sound is brighter on the Hexa. But it's more detailed also on the Hexa as well. You're getting a lot more treble extension on the Hexa. And also you're getting a lot more extension in the upper mid-range on the Hexa. But this can lead to the ch, -ch noises and the ch noises to be a little bit sibilant on the Hexa in comparison to the Quartet. I wouldn't call these a sibilant set at all. But the Quartet is a much more comfortable, less fatiguing set than the hexa so if you want something comfortable and like very long-term listening without any issues you're gonna like the quartet um but the mid-range is also it is the mid-range is great on both of these though really good but the hexa has a very good mid-range even like like even like you know the hexa is already good and everything but even for the hexa the best part of the hexa to me is the mid-range but yeah, um, it's a little bit thinner sounding than the uh, Quartet. I think the Quartet has a bit of heavier note weight in the mid-range. That could be good for some people, bad for some people. It does add a little bit more air, but at the same time, like like the Hex has a little bit more air because of the thin, like like the thinner note weight. But um, sometimes some people prefer the thicker, like a uh, more. Um, it's just a thicker note weight on the on the mid-range in the vocals on the Quartet. I actually like the Quartet's. Um, the, the quartet's note weight, but I like the detail of the um, the hexa more. Uh, I think, and as I said, you're gonna get a more natural timbre on the quartet. Mid range and the Rinko. Uh, the Rinko's mid range is pretty similar to the mid range on the quartet. I say the quartet's a little bit better in the mid range, but I, I don't. The Rinko is really hard for me to compare stuff with. It's a very strange sounding set. So, I mean, I actually prefer the Rinko over both of these. If you want to know that. But this is a different thing that I can't, I'm really having trouble comparing with. So I'm going to probably just take this out <laughs> because I'm just, uh, my, when I'm trying to think of like the way the Rinko sounds, if you want to think about like what I mean, I guess if you ever tried a tube amp and how the tube amp kind of distorts the sound a little bit, doesn't sound correct, but it sounds good. That's kind of like the Rinko. The Rinko doesn't sound correct. sounds good. So I, I don't want to compare too much with the Rinko. So we're going to more focus on the Hexa here. Uh, going to the highs. The highs are much better extended on the Hexa, but can get more fatiguing than on the Quartet. The Quartet does have a very, it has a quite rolled off highs. Not like, not like there's no highs at all, but a treble head would prefer the Hexa a lot more um, than on the Quartet. The Quartet is warmer, has rolled off highs in comparison to the Hexa. So, which one should you get? You know, I talked about all this stuff, so which one should you get? I think that the Quartet is a, if you like warm IMs, oh god. If you like the warm IMs, you're gonna probably want the Quartet. If you want brighter sound, you're gonna get the Hexa. I think they're both excellent sets for the price. Is this worth the price increase over the Hexa? It's a $30 difference, I think. I would actually take the Quartet more over it. I think also the Quartet's more comfortable somehow, even though these are like a smaller IEM in comparison in size. Um, I think that somehow, I don't know what they, the way they shape this thing is amazing. It's just, it's very comfortable for my ears. Anyway, um, I think that this is worth a $30 increase if you like the warmer sound as well, especially. Uh, these are still amazing though for the price. So it's really like a, what you like more. I think that this is better for just vocalist tracks. Um, and if you don't have problems with BA timbre ever, this is the best thing for you. If you don't have problems with siblings, this is better. This has a more natural sound. I'd say that if you want to listen to, um, uh, to like instruments, if you're looking for more detail in the instrument, the Hexa. Uh, if you want more of a natural sound in the instrument, the Quartet. Um, I'd say if you're listening to EDM, 
if, and you like warm sound, this is can do EDM really well. I really like the the punchy sub bass. The, the amount of sub bass is really nice on these for stuff like EDM and stuff like that. Um, I think that the imaging is better on the hexa, so I think that the hexa will do better for very busy tracks. But that's if you can handle the brightness. I think that these are for, for two very different people, or if or you probably want to buy both if you're like in the market to get like you know a variety of sets. These are two very different sounding IEMs. You have this is a very bright sound and this is a very warm sound. Not very warm, but it's warm. So, um, and if you if you love the cadenza and you want to upgrade from the cadenza, you want this. If you if you love the cadenza. If you want to upgrade from something like the, the Pandemon, which I reviewed um, not so long ago, you want the Hexa. Well, the Hexa is not too much better than the Pandemon. If you want to see the review on that, uh, check it out on my channel. But um, yeah, I think that they're two different sounding sets. That um, They're both amazing. Uh, I think that these are more detailed also. So if you're just strictly analytical and you want something like flatter and more detailed, just exactly just the way it's supposed to be. Hexa, if you want something a little bit more bassy, um, uh, but uh, fun, I think these these are better. Um, vocal centric, this one, uh, yeah, all that stuff. So I, I think that um, you got the point. Um, both of these are amazing sets, and um, I can recommend either of them, and you're gonna be happy, I think, if you, if you try either of them. Uh, I hope this review helped out. Help see. Ya.